I really do appreciate you for being here tonight. I hope that we do have some persons who are visitors tonight. I really have anticipated this lesson because the lesson tonight is my chance to demonstrate to our visitors and to remind ourselves of the great God that we serve. And when I talk about the great God that we serve, I think about power. That is great, and it's wonderful. And I think about uh, many different things when I think about the greatness of God. But my greatest respect, or my, the greatest element that I recognize in the God that I serve is God's love, because I need it. And His mercy, because I need it. And you know, I find that many people, because they hear us say we're right, they think that we're arrogant and that we don't believe in the love of God. Tonight, if I can do my job, you'll see the Church of Christ like you've never seen us before. Because sometimes I think that we may be in our determination, and I'm not implicating anybody, I'm talking about myself, in our fervor and determination to present information to help you see what we're saying, we sometimes maybe forget that you could get sidetracked and say all they think about is winning the argument. Well, that's not true. It is a very important part. I'm thinking very much about winning the argument. You know, some people say, well, you shouldn't argue. Well, they haven't read the Bible. Acts 17, 17 says Paul's disputed daily. That's an argument. Every day. Where did he do it? In the synagogue. If you want to make application to that today, that's me being over at your church. And I do that all the time. Last week, all up in them with my camera. I take my camera because people lie about what I do. I'm nice. I go in and I ask questions and I try to get someone to sit down and talk or stand up and talk about our differences. And you know, in the 1500s, most religious people hailed Martin Luther as a great individual because he stood up against the Catholic Church and nailed his thesis to the door and said, here's the reasons why Catholicism is in need of reform. Now, I don't know that I would have the courage that he had because that could have cost him his life. But I know this, if I could have summoned the courage, I wouldn't have said reform the Catholic Church. I would have said destroy the Catholic Church. That's what he should have done because it's not biblical. And most persons who came out of that system are now called Protestantism. And you know what? They are protesting Catholicism. You see, that's honorable. Used to be. Until we all got to the point where we say, well, everybody's really okay the way they're going. And it's, you know, you don't judge and you do things your way or whatever. But see, there was a time when we said that individuals who stood up and signed a declaration called a Declaration of Independence. And we are not going to put up with this stuff from England anymore. Those were great individuals. And tonight, folks, that's what we're doing. We're declaring our position. We mean no harm. We love you. We think we're right about this declaration. And we just want you to examine it tonight. Tonight, the lesson that I prepared is actually, I think, the number one argument that stands in the way for you seeing the truth. Thank you. I was really disappointed that night when we went through those slides and I'm just enjoying them. Y'all weren't seeing them. I believe this is the number one argument that stands in the way of you seeing the truth. And tonight, I hope that we can remove it. We begin with God's love. I don't think that everybody really does uh, grasp God's love. You know, we talk about the love of God, and many times people have God looking like Santa Claus, that's just a gift giver, and he says, don't be bad and be good, and that's kind of a, you know, just some person that's lovable, and our grandpa or some uh, favorite uncle or something like that. But tonight, we really need to see the love of God. And here in 1 John, chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner, and that, that's the idea of seeing this. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Isn't he actually saying, look at my love? Did you ever stop and say, you know what? I'm not satisfied with that verse in, in the sense that all the information is there. It's not. All the information on any subject is never found in one verse, is it? No. All the information about the love of God is not found in that verse. He's telling you to look at it, consider it, but it's not there. It's not all there. That we're sons of God. Someone might say, that's it. No, that's not it. 
That's just the fact. That's not how it happened. How did you become a son of God? We're talking about the love of God here. Now, John 15, 13, someone might say, well, here's the love of God. Well, no, this says man's love. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? That's noble. But we're not talking about what men do, are we? Men go to war and lay down their lives for people they don't even know. Is that right? That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the love of God. This is actually talking about Jesus and laying down his life for his friends. He's describing, discussing his disciples right here. But this is not the love of God. Not, not as described in 1 John 3, 1. The love of God is described here. This is the level that we're talking about tonight. When you were his enemy, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Now, now we're talking about love, aren't we? Aren't we? Love your enemies. Didn't Jesus say that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45? If we're going to be children of my Father, our Father makes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. He makes it to rain on the good and the evil. We're to love everyone. And I think sometimes we haven't studied the love of God for ourselves, and we're not loved. We feel unloved, and as a result of that feeling, we can't express love. Have you ever heard that before? Individuals who weren't properly raised, didn't have an opportunity to experience love, have a hard time reciprocating or giving out love. And when you don't study the love of God, oftentimes you come off not really understanding yourself. And many members of the Church of Christ that I've met are miserable because they don't understand the love of God and they think that they're not saved. They actually do not have an assurance because they're not really recognizing the love of God. Jesus loves you. God loves you. He loved you when you were his enemy. He surely loves you now that you're going to save one of his children. And we will be reconciled. And uh, we will reconciled and we shall be saved by Jesus' life. That's the book of Hebrews. The high priesthood of Jesus. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Hebrews 7.25 I have had the, the great uh, pleasure to baptize many Baptists in my preaching time. Including preachers. And the number one thing that I have trouble with them once they obey the gospel is to get them to see the assurance that we have as Christians. They really have a lot of problems. That's why they have this once saved, always saved business. It's because they never did really grasp how it is that God can continue to love you when you continue to make mistakes. But see, it's because they haven't really studied the love of God. If he had his son die for you when you were a sinner, when you were his enemy, how much more, look at that, much more being now one of his reconciled will be saved by his life. Jesus Christ and God our Father loves us and it is a love that is just beyond the comprehension almost of man. Because when we cross each other, what do we do? Sometimes if you cross me too many times, I'll mark you off. Well, God doesn't. Does God mark you off when you cross him time after time? I think some brethren think that he does. And they don't have a happiness and assurance that when they come, 1 John 1, 9, and confess that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. These things I write unto you, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, my little children, that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. That's the love of God. And this evening, we're not done. We're not done by a long shot on this explanation of the love of God. Because I don't think we got it yet. We've got the statement, but.